This video explains how to calculate cumulative maxima and minima in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you an example and for this example we first need to create an example vector object as you can see in lines 2 and 3 of the code. So after running these lines of code a new data object called x is appearing at the top right and we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 4 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a vector object that contains different integer values. Now, if we want to calculate the cumulative maximum value of this vector object, then we can apply the cummax function, as you can see in line 6 of the code. And within the cummax function, we simply need to specify the name of the data object for which we want to calculate the cumulative maximum value. And in this case, I'm also storing the output of the cummax function in a new data object that I'm calling xcummax. So after running this line of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that this data object is appearing and we can print this data object in the console by running line seven of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new vector which contains the cumulative maximum value. Similar to that, we can use the cummin function to calculate the cumulative minimum value, as you can see in line 9 of the code. So after running this line of code, a new data object called xcummin is created, and we can print this data object by running line 10. And then you can see that we have created another vector object which contains the cumulative minimum value. It's also possible to append these cumulative maxima and minima as new data frame columns to a data frame object, as you can see in line 12 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm using the data frame function and within the data frame function, I specify that I want to show three columns in the data frame. The first column should contain our input vector. The second column should contain our cumulative maximum value and the third column should contain our cumulative minimum value. And then I'm storing the output of the data frame function in a new data object that I call data. So after running line 12 of the code, this new data frame is appearing at the top right and we can print the data frame by running line 13. And then you can see that we have created a new data set that contains these three columns. It's also possible to visualize our cumulative maxima and minima in a graphic. And for this, we first need to convert our data frame to long format. And in order to do that, we first need to install and load the tidyr package, as you can see in lines 15 and 16 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 16 of the code. And then in the next step, we can convert our data frame to long format using the pivot longer function, as you can see in lines 18 to 20 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame is created, which is called data long. And we can print the first six rows of this data frame to the console by running line 21. And then you can see that we have converted our data frame from wide to long format. If we want to draw our data, we should also install and load the ggplot2 package, as you can see in lines 23 and 24. I have installed this package as well, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 24 of the code. And then in the next step, I'm using the ggplot and geomline functions to draw our cumulative minima and maxima in a graphic. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the bottom right of our studio that a new plot is appearing and the red line corresponds to our input values x and the green line is corresponding to the cumulative maxima and the blue line is corresponding to the cumulative minima. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. 
Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.